Hey guys and gals, Never here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Shelter. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Hope you all have a hope you all had a lovely, wonderful Easter. I am currently in the middle of it myself right now. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and jump right back in. All right. Looking up, they could barely make out two figures standing at the very edge of the deck. They were surrounded by monsters. The situation looked dire. Those who heard the stories from the past weren't scared. Those who knew were filled with hope. Those were the voices heralding the coming of daylight. Ooh, monster sounds. The monsters swarmed the top deck of shelter, and yet more of them were constantly coming from the towering mountain. There didn't seem to be any prey in that area. Those of the canines who didn't lock themselves inside shelter were fighting against monsters on the ground below. The only two traces of pure life still remained on the top deck, and there, and that's where most of the ravenous hunters gravitated towards. Those two lives felt magnificent, powerful, and rich. Not like just two lives, but rather more than a dozen. The promise of that feast pushed the beast forward, closer to the warm souls burning like two torches in cold and darkness. But then something changed. The warm had grown so much it burned and blinded. What had been two separate flames a moment earlier suddenly became a single giant inferno of life. Black eye cord exploded from the middle of the swarm, and its frozen drops tinkled before the chunks of the beast's uh, before the chunks of the beast's bodies hit against the metal with dull thuds. A great commotion bursted through the field, with growls and roars ringing alongside the sounds of slashing and bashing. The monsters lunged and snapped blindly at the center of the fray, turning the battlefield into a deafening sea of madness. Yet even in the chaotic swirl, the two flames had become one, blazed in the unity of their newfound order. Burry and Luke had connected to had connected in pack mentality. They ran through the crowd of their enemies, dodging and striking with perfect timing and precision. They are now stronger together than they could ever be on their own. Luke gained Burry's knowledge in monster of non monster anatomy and his techniques in burning inner mana for amplifying one's body. He wielded the Saint Bernard's the Saint Bernard dog's skills and talents like his own. He commanded his body with raw strength and balance. He knew exactly where to slice to assure the monster would drop dead or immobile. Burry benefited from their union even more. He already possessed a deep knowledge of mana burning, but the human had greater natural affinity for flexible control of all the different types of it. Borrowing Luke's instincts, he constantly siphoned and amplified his body with the mana released from the monsters, turning into an unstoppable beast wielding the power of all elements. The force behind his punches grew thricefold with the might of the ungulates. The steel-hard carapaces of the more massive beast crumbled like eggshells before his feline-like infused strikes. Once Luke had captured the essence of the avians, the battlefield opened even further with their pack of two. Right after another beast fell under Burry's fist, the human jumped and flew high into the sky. After leaving the dog alone in the middle of the fray, Luke found himself quickly approached by the screeching winged beasts. He split two of them open with a single slice of the magic knife, but he couldn't pour enough mana into the blade in time to slice the third one. Feeling the shadow looming over him, he pirouetted and threw the knife right at the screeching beaked maw. The monster twisted its neck and the knife missed just an inch. But then a red light flashed and Burry was holding the blade, already planting a heavy roundhouse kick right into the creature's frail spine and wings. The monster fell back down to the floor, to the ravenous swarms. Yet from a distance, more of the flying beasts flew at the human flew at the human and the dog, who were still in midair. In a rush, Burry grabbed Luke's hand. He spun and swung him in a wide arc, and he threw the human's weightless body even higher, while he himself fell back towards the snarling swarms. They wouldn't have the upper hand against the monsters for long. Soon their pack mentality would end, and they would be more exhausted and weaker than before. They had to use the remaining time and all the tools at their disposal to the full of their potential. And one such tool flew at Luke, tossed from below by Burry. A small cylindrical metal box landed in his hand. That was exactly the time to use it. The unlock code was... Oh, you don't... I don't know what the fucking unlock code is! One, two, three, four. Bam! Oh. Crap, this is not gonna work! Our pack mentality breaks and I'm left with, with a useless piece of scrap. I toss it down at the monsters and dive towards the base of the control tower while I still have enough avian mana. My way down, I give the last glance in the direction of the mountains in the distance, where I first spotted the giant monster. I'm so high up, I actually see the creature again. It isn't fighting anymore. Did, did it? 
Win? It turns its gigantic head in my direction. The giant white eyes, like wide pools of light, stare right into mine. I can see it baring its teeth in a terrifying, mocking grin. The influence of avian mod over my body runs out right after my boots land on the metal door. I slide down and run towards the card slider. I was convinced that it would be pointless for me to even try entering the tower, because none of the screens would work without the emergency backup power. However, if the power is indeed back on, then I really need to find a way to force the door open. Once inside, I'll be able to reroute the power intake from the internal general shelter system. One second, y'all. Give me a moment. Alright, y'all. I'm back. I literally have no idea what the code for the damn thing is, so let me load it up. And let me take a wild, wild guess, six nine, six nine. Left, one, two, three, four, uh, zero, 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 zero. What the hell? What? Oh, wait. I have an idea. All right, I have an idea, y'all. Let's try something. Load. Let's do it. Okay, I have an idea. Yes! Alright. Coffee tent. Alright. Kneel before the power of the ancients! Luke made a quick front flip and threw the beeping box right at the center of the buzzing black mass of the monster. Right back at, right back at Burry, now fighting for his life in the middle of that madness. Shelter tech! He reached out his hand to the side and squeezed it into a fist. With a red flash, the knife appeared back in his hand and Burry was once again by his side. They both took deep breaths, ready to spend their final action in unity to, to abide by one of the oldest and most fundamental laws of magic. The louder you shout it, the harder it hits. Bomb of Colchis! Yep, that's a bomb. Oh my god, JC, a bomb. Damn, son. After slaying a few aerial monsters on our way back down, me and Burry finally land in front of the control tower door. Our pack mentality has run out, and we're both out of our breaths for a moment. Despite that, we're both happy. Using that magic is always so insanely exciting. We look, we look in, when we look in the direction of the recent explosion, we no longer see swarms of monsters. Only a circle of melted metal with a wide black ring of scorch around it. Most of the monsters caught in the explosion were incinerated so thoroughly they didn't even leave ash behind. I only hope Shelter wasn't damaged too seriously. We still got it, huh? Indeed we do, and we did all that even without our usual assistance. It brings back the memories of that day we saved Morzebrook with the power of the relics. Burry smiles, and he looks somehow nostalgic. The events he's talking about was the first time we truly went out all out on utilizing our available discoveries. The news of that day shook the whole country. Currently, the most dangerous relics are regularly confiscated by the capital as part of our limited autonomy pact. However, we still have a bunch of tools we can use in an emergency. Plus, there is nothing more dangerous than our Skies Ablaze cannon, and they, can, they can't take that away from us. No time to waste. Let me try and get this thing to work this time. I use the knife to unscrew the bolts holding a metal plate under the card reader. If only I can get to the cables and connections there, I think there's something I can do to activate it. First screw, second screw. Please hurry, they're coming and I cannot sense them. The tip of the knife slips off the bolt. My hand shakes so much after using the blade's power all this time. I imagine that Burry's spirit is greatly unbalanced as well after our pack mentality. I hear distant noises of monsters running towards us. We gain some time, but it's not going to last forever. I unscrew the last bolts and take the metal plate off, exposing the bundled wires underneath. I remember working on those with Max way in the past. The card reader wouldn't react to any input because we, it wasn't powered that time either. To get it to work that time, we had to expose the cables and feed it some of our mana manually, just enough to get the reader to beep and the door to click so we could slide it open. I can see the butchery we did on cables that time. We cut and unfolded the elastic coating to expose the bare metal wires, and after we were done, we fastened sheets of plastic around them for isolation. I struggled for the various strings we used to secure them in place. I know I won't be able to unfasten the knots, so I start to carefully pull the sheets down, making sure to not pluck any of the wires. I find my way to one of the two wire bundles I need, and I wrap my fingers around the bare metal. 
If only I could pour some mana into it to see if the card reader reacts. But I know I can't. Infusing mana into raw materials is something beyond my control. Using the magic knife with its energy siphoning stone is easier. But for the cables, we need someone more proficient in magic. Burry, hold these, please. Charge them. Understood. Burry crouches beside me and traces his soft finger pads across my hand until he finds the cables. I whisper a few more instructions to him and then stand up to observe the reader's light indicators. The monsters are definitely getting closer, but with some luck we should be able to pass through just in the nick of time before any of them can reach us. Come on, Burry! There it is! Please work! I reach out to take out the access card from one of the pockets on the inner side of the coat. And my heart sinks. Oh no! Oh what? I'm sorry! Luke, what's wrong? I lost the card! How? Where? It was when we were flying, then... No, I must have dropped it around here when the monsters first attacked me! Help me look for it! Sniff it up! Move! I shove Burry out of the way of a falling shadow. The jaw filled with long, sharp teeth snaps mere inches behind my back. I shout out in pain when a long, bony arm swipes over the ground and catches my shin in a vice-like grip. The world around me spins. For a brief moment, I have a clear view of the ugly monster's head. It's one of those I was fighting on the roof right before fleeing with avian mana. My vision goes dark in a moment when the monster swings me like a whip, making all the blood in my body flow to my head. Is he going to beat Burry with my body or just splat me against the metal? Either way, I know I either move or die. Still blind and confused, I bend forward and desperately cut below my feet. The monster screeches and I feel myself falling. My vision comes back to me exactly at the time Burry crushes the, the creature's head with a heavy punch at its temple. I fall to the floor and then the hard, tense body of the monster smashes against me, squeezing the air out of my lungs. I can't move a muscle. Luke! The pressure against my chest alleviates, and I'm able to fi finally move. Burry lifts and keeps the monster's body up for me to start squirming out free. They're coming again! We will not be able to fight against all of them with just the two of us. Please, let me release some of your mana and I will... Burry's eyes dart upwards just before he gets bashed by a charging monster. The dog manages to block the massive blow in time, but blown away, he drops the carcass back, back on me. By the corner of my vision, I see Burry blasted away a good couple hundred meters, tumbling over the flat metal surface until finally he smashes against the snowy cliff towering over shelter. I, on the other hand, don't have enough mana, don't have enough time to slip away from under the body of the first fallen monster. I'm pinned to the floor by its massive weight once again. The other one shakes its head, and it looks like it wants to continue chasing after Burry. I wedge my right arm from under the dead body, crushing me, and cut one of the feet off them with the magic knife. In fury, it turns towards me, ready to bite. But yet another slice of amplified air blade slash severs its upper muscle and half of its head off. Now I lie on the freezing cold metal floor, crushed under the weight of one dead monster with the other one bleeding out just an inch from my face. And I hear more approaching monsters. The time we bought by using the bomb was already ran out. I watch Burry forcing himself to scramble out from under the thick, vast pile of snow and ice. He's still shaken, but I see the air around him bending. He's chanting the words of an ember, and all the monsters are being drawn to that. In hunger, or in fear. Luke! He stares right at me with urgency. They are finally ready, he seems to say. As I glance towards the sounds of the approaching steps and growls, I see the monsters running straight at Burry, completely ignoring me. Do they feel what's approaching? They look so desperate to stop him! As they should be. But there is still more than Burry, there's still more that Burry needs to cast to his ember. He doesn't have all the, comp the components yet. With all the strength of my spirit, I force my vitality into the mana siphoning stone in the knife's handle, and the air around the edge of the blade bends and crackles, but I contain the energy inside. Alright, y'all, I'm gonna actually gonna pause it right there. Ugh, alright, thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Looks like our boys are in a bit of a pickle. Gonna have to wait to see how they get out of it in the next episode. Anyway, I love y'all, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye